This Week in IT. Windows 11 is getting more efficient updates. The new Outlook client for Windows is hitting general availability August 1st for commercial customers and Config Refresh is now available for Windows 11. So stay tuned for all the details. Hello and welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I discuss everything connected to Windows, Microsoft 365 and Azure. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 35% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,070 subscribers and I'd really love it if we could push that up to 7,100. So if you'd like to see these weekly news updates from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Whether you're an end user or an IT pro, we all know that Windows updates are one of the biggest pain points for users and organizations alike. Now, Microsoft has been gradually improving the update technology over the years and it's just announced that there are going to be more changes coming in the next big update to Windows 11, which is coming in the fall. So that's Windows 11 version 24H2 and Windows Server 2025. Now, currently built into Windows 11, we have something called differential updates. So if you imagine Microsoft releases a new version of Windows 11, so let's say we've got the upcoming release 24H2. Now, as that version is released, all the monthly cumulative updates where you get new feature support and your security updates are released as differential updates. So each one of those updates contains the differences since the last major release. Now the problem is that those differential updates over time gradually get bigger and bigger and of course that requires more disk space, more network bandwidth and it all just takes longer and it's more difficult to install and apply. Now this week Microsoft announced something called checkpoint updates and this really adds to that differential technology and helps to try and keep those updates that come after a big release a little bit smaller. So how does this work exactly? So these checkpoint updates are going to be smaller and faster because they only include the information since the last checkpoint. Now Microsoft hasn't said exactly how often they're going to release these checkpoint updates but they're going to be released periodically during the lifetime, the supported lifetime of a particular version of Windows. So in short Windows 11 24H2 and later versions will be able to merge all of those checkpoints and only download content that's missing. Now Microsoft isn't saying the exact frequency at which they're going to release these so-called checkpoint updates but it's not going to require any changes on your part everything just carries on as normal so you just need to be aware as an IT pro that this technology is coming but whatever update mechanism you use you don't have to do anything. Before I move on to content config refresh. I just want to give you a quick heads up about a webinar we've got coming up on July 24th with Exchange expert and Microsoft MVP Nicholas Blank. He's going to give IT pros six steps that will allow you to streamline marketing brand initiatives and you're going to learn how to quickly implement HTML signatures using a drag and drop editor to centralize signature management, standardize and apply rules and how to measure success with an analytics dashboard. So I'm going to put the link for the webinar in the description of the video below. So do sign up for that. It's going to be really interesting. Microsoft has been talking about config refresh for some time and this is basically a technology for MDM policies that will allow organizations to reapply those policies something like you know, every 30 minutes. So the idea of config refresh is to allow organizations to better meet compliance regulations, to protect systems from unauthorized changes, and of course just to improve security in general. Config Manager allows organizations to set devices to refresh and reapply their MDM policies as much as 
every 30 minutes without the device having to be rebooted or having to check in with Microsoft Intune. There will also be the option to pause config refresh for troubleshooting and maintenance purposes. Config refresh is only available for Windows 11 devices. You have to be running version 23H2 or later, and you must have the June 2024 cumulative update installed. The new Outlook app is hitting general availability on August the 1st for commercial customers. Now, organizations don't need to worry that suddenly your classic Outlook clients are going to disappear and be replaced with this new version because this new version isn't going to be right for everybody at this stage. If you don't want users to download the new version of Outlook, you can hide the try the new version of Outlook toggle button in Outlook. There's a policy that you can apply if you haven't already to remove that button from the legacy client. And there's also a policy that will allow organizations to prevent new mailboxes being added to the new Outlook client. Now, I've been using the new Outlook clients really since it went into to preview, I think it was sometime last year. And I have to say that I'm not an expert or pro user of Outlook. My needs are fairly basic. And definitely this is not going to be for everybody. I can give you a few uh, issues that I've had with it even now, even though we're just like a week away essentially from general availability. Now, if you're using Microsoft 365 and Exchange Online for your email, this client just works better. The biggest problem I've had with it using Gmail and other non-Microsoft 365 email accounts is with the calendar part of the application, if you want to schedule a meeting, there's no option to to make it a Teams meeting. So that has a really, really big problem for anybody who's using Google Workspace or anything that's not a Microsoft 365 email account. Some of the other problems I've had with it, at least with the Google Workspace, is that in order to receive new mails after my notebook has gone to sleep, I essentially have to restart the application. So I think that might be a little bit frustrating for some users. There are some other general things. Now, this is a local email client, but guess what? At this point in time, either depending on whether you've received these features or not in your tenant, it has limited offline support or no offline support. So my client has no offline support at the moment. If I don't have internet connection, I can't even start the new Outlook client. It's as simple as that. But Microsoft is promising offline support. It's gradually rolling out. A lot of people haven't received it yet. So if that's important for you, this new client is definitely not ready right at this point in time and I would just wait maybe you know another six months and check in to see when that has really changed. The other big downside to this is that if you rely on COM add-ins and of course a lot of organizations do there is no COM add-in support in the new Outlook. Microsoft is saying you're basically going to have to move to web add-ins. Some people are saying that they're just not as functional or as good as COM add-ins so that might be an issue and of course, for a lot of legacy applications, there's just no chance of moving to web add-ins at this point. That's just not going to happen. So that might be a big disadvantage for your organization as well. But, you know, it's there. It's hitting general availability if you'd like to check it out and to see whether it's likely to work for you. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube and to grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with another video right now that you might find interesting. It's about a new PowerShell module for Microsoft Entra. So there's a video on the screen from last week about that. Really interesting stuff if you're having to uh, administer Microsoft 365, of course. And don't forget to register for our email signature webinar with Nicholas Blank. That's going to be a really good one on July 24th. But that's it from me this week and I hope to see you next time.